OAuth Web Server Flow, details and demo. Welcome to another video in the security series. We're diving deep into web server flow for OAuth. In a past video, I used a beer garden analogy to explain the intricacies of the web server flow. We're gonna take a look at that, but go into the actual steps and I'm gonna do a demo. This is the diagram from the previous video. And we talked about the resource owner communicating with a third party website. And over the red is what's called the front end channel, the browser, which is just slightly less secure than a direct channel, the black. And so the resource owner is gonna be requesting some data. The burger house, the third party website doesn't have it, needs to get it from Salesforce on behalf of the resource owner, not using a generic integration user, but actually using a specific owner's access. So an auth code is sent to the burger house, from the burger house, through the browser, which triggers the user to be sent to the Salesforce login screen. And it'll request, it'll have them authenticate and approve the scope. And then it will send back an auth code, which is then sent to the burger house, which it uses to request an access token on a secure channel and then it can get the data um, from the resource server. So if we go into the actual swim lane diagram for this, we'll follow these steps. At the top, we have the browser, the web server, the Salesforce security provider authentication server, and the org instance. Step 1A, they request some data that needs some Salesforce. So the web server redirects back with an auth code request. In step two, the browser is taken to the login screen of Salesforce where the user authenticates and approves as necessary. And then 2B, 2D, the browser is sent back with the auth code, the little token. In 3A, the browser is redirected back to the callback URL with the auth code. And then on a secure channel separately, 4A, the web server present, presents the auth code and the Salesforce auth server validates the client ID, the client's secret, and the auth code. Successful, an auth, uh, uh, access token is granted, and then the web server can present it and get data. And then once the web server has the data, the user can be presented with the blended data. We're gonna walk through a demo of this. So first, we're gonna look at App Manager, and here is App One, which is an app that we uh, created in a previous demo. And looking at this, I have the consumer details, which gives me the uh, client ID and the client secret. Now, in that previous video, I put a dummy callback URL because right now we're dumbing this up and I just dropped salesforce.com as, as the callback URL. This is a dummy URL, callback URL, and I'll call out when that takes into effect. Um, but that's an important piece of information is this callback URL. So in our flow, we're gonna pick up on 1B. The web server has received a request which requires authenticated user data. And we wanna pull the data as an end user. So what we're gonna do is there is a particular protocol for sending the redirect. You need to have, this is over the front end channel and it's going to be the URL. And then we're gonna to go to services OAuth authorized, passing in the client ID now we have to replicate that callback URL, even though it's a dummy one, and then the response type will be code. So I'm gonna take this, this URL, which is sent by the web server, and I'm gonna paste it into the new incognito window. And you'll notice that that takes me to Salesforce. So now the, the end user is presented with these Salesforce credentials. Now, I have put into this incognito window credentials for an end user in Salesforce, and I'm gonna log in. And now what it's done is it is logged in and then done the redirect to the callback URL. You can see that here with the salesforce.com callback and the auth code is included. So if I come back and I paste that here, this was my answer. So this was the dummy redirect URL, which we don't need to worry about. This 
was the one that I entered in, but you'll notice that the auth code has been provided. And so this is the auth code that will grant me access using the proper tools. So I'm gonna go using Postman to the Salesforce and auth server. And what I'm replicating is we have seen 2A, the browser, we've seen it approve, we've seen 2D, it coming back, and we now have the auth code token. So what's gonna happen is the web server now has the auth code. And because we sent back to the callback URL, it was a dummy one, but it should have sent back. And the web server on the front end channel was able to pick up the auth code. So now over a secure channel, which we're gonna simulate using Postman on step 4A, we're gonna pass in the auth code, the client ID, the client secret, and try to get an access token. So here I have a Postman post to the endpoint auth code. Now I pasted this in and I see percent %3D, percent %3D, and I know that that's been encoded. It actually means two equal signs because I had to decode it. But I have the client ID, the client secret, and here we are again with the dummy URL. This does not equal Salesforce. This was just a dummy URL for the callback. This should match. All of these pieces of information should match to make sure that you're, you're the correct one requesting it and I'm gonna hit send. And now I have been granted an access token into Salesforce on behalf of that user. And notice, nowhere does the third party web server get access to the username and password for the user. It's all done indirectly with a temporary use auth code. So right now, here is a um, access token. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna add a request. I'm gonna paste in a request to get data. And the key is I'm gonna go into the headers. So this is the get request. Authorization. I'm gonna put bearer space. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this access token that we just got. I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna paste it as the bearer space and paste that there and hit send. And now I have just been able to get data out of my org on behalf of the user. So what this allows me to do is I authenticate it using the authorization code. Never had access to the username and password and then taking that, I created a new request, which was a get airport. And that enabled me to make that data request by going into the header and putting the bearer token in there. So you can see we passed in 4A, the web server, the authorization code, client ID, client secret. We got back the access token. And on step 5a, we presented the access token in the header of the request, got the data back, and the user could be presented with it. So the key element of the web server flow is that you want the third-party website to act on behalf of a user. You can interact with that user. This is a key element, is you can, the, the web server third-party web server can send a browser request to that end user. They are redirected, they access in Salesforce, and then through the redirect mechanism, a code is given back to the third-party website, which it can then exchange with its own client ID and client secret and get access to act on behalf. Those are the key elements of the web server flow. So I hope this was helpful and look forward to seeing you in future sessions. So go web server flow. And um, come join me at more. Uh, it's www.stevetecharc.com. Join me on the Steve Tech Arc YouTube channel and look for more videos coming soon. Have a great day.